Hey, you have Patrick Fendora here, co-founder at Vetted Biz. Very excited to have on Dirk Stallman, president at Verlo Mattresses. He's been in the furnishing industry for the past two decades. He's the president again of Verlo Mattress. They were founded in 1958. So I think probably this is the franchise president that I'm speaking to that's the founding years over 50 years. I don't know if there's another one. So very excited to, to have on Dirk uh, and talk about the the mattress industry, larger furnishing industry, uh, exactly what Verlo Mattress does, and keep it keep it open and, and and better understand if the furnishing industry could be good to start a business or op- potentially open up a, a Verlo Mattress. So thanks, Dirk, for joining today. Hey, thanks for having me, Patrick. So how how did you get into the furnishing business uh, and then Verlo? Yeah, so. Um, uh, Part of my uh, my background is retail, and um, I, I started in ad agencies many moons ago, and I had a chance to go to Kohl's department stores uh, when they were on an absolute terror. So uh, this is back in the mid to late '90s. They were growing. They were the darlings of Wall Street. It's it's a great story, actually. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, when I started at Kohl's, I think we were at. Oh gosh, it was probably less than a hundred stores when I left Kohl's. We were close to five hundred, so it was a it was a really fun time to be there. But I um I took a job with uh, another department store chain here, which a- also was based in Milwaukee, and that was at the time Carson Perry Scott, uh, which was a division of Saks Department Store Group. So uh, I worked for SDSG for uh, probably about four years, but in that time. Um, I got to know the home furnishings business because we had furniture galleries, uh, much like, you know, the old department stores did back in the day, Marshall Fields, Macy's. Uh, and it sort of stuck with me. It was a very interesting category. And that got me over to another retailer here in town called Steinhoffels, which is a very large market leader, uh, regional department uh, furniture store uh, chain. Um, and I was there for almost 12 years. Um, and built a marketing department and had a lot of fun. And I had an awesome uh, boss, Gary Steinhoffel, who I, I still love. Uh, and uh, it was really a great experience for me to really learn the ins and outs uh, of the industry. So, and then, I, and now I'm here uh, at Verlo. Uh, I've never had to leave Milwaukee, which I may regret someday, but at the, <laughs> at the moment, it's all right. It's all right. It's all good. Yeah, no, I've heard great things. I mean, some people joke about the weather, but I mean, besides that, I've only heard good things, especially the people. I mean, the people. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm from the Midwest. I grew up in Rockford, Illinois, and and uh, this is only 90 miles away from here. And, you know, I, f- I feel most comfortable in the Midwest. Um, so it's uh, it's it's a good place for me. So Dirk, we met at the Franchise Brokers Association and we yeah. talked a little bit about the, the mattress industry yeah, and the kind of the players in it. And it's always just kind of picked my interest because you do spend eight hours or at least you should, should be spending eight hours on this piece of furniture. And for me, it, it is an important part of my house, probably the most important part because I spend a third of my life on it. Right. Um, and there's still not great information. Uh, consumers don't have all that much information on when to choose, what, what mm-hmm. to choose in a mattress sure. or maintaining a mattress. Um, so I really enjoyed our conversation on, on all that, as well as even sleep hygiene. We got into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah that. We kind of geeked out on sleep hygiene a little bit. Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I, I'm into it. Um, but tell, tell, uh, tell me again, a little bit about the the mattress industry, where it sits, the growth, and yeah. So um, I think the ISPA forecast and ISPA is the International Sleep Products Association. So this is sort of the the governing trade body um, that sits over all mattress and and sleep products, right? Um, I think they were projecting twenty twenty one to be about eleven point nine billion dollars, uh, hmm. and that's an and that's in wholesale. So um, you know, it's, it's a sizable, uh, sizable market. Um, as we always say, you know, who do you know that doesn't sleep on a mattress? Um, and it's usually, uh, interesting when you start driving around a neighborhood and it's not just a master bedroom, it's a kid's room, it's a guest room. 
there's a lot of mattresses uh, all over the place and it's it's a big big category um i think mattresses is also very much tied to housing growth and so when you start seeing um some figures and and certainly there's been a lot of buzz about it on how large the millennial group is uh coming into what we would call really key uh, buying years, right? So let's call it that age 35 to 54 cell. Um, maybe when you're ready to buy your own furniture, when you're ready to get rid of the hand-me-downs and <laughs> some of the um, the furniture you might've built yourself. Well, I don't uh, mind that, about a hand-me-down couch, but a hand-me-down mattress. Yeah. Well, that's just gross. I mean, same- <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's just, but it's probably better to not go there, but yeah. um, you know, it, it's big and um, we've seen some forecasts that literally for the next 10 years, as this group comes of age and gets into their key buying years, um, there's going to be pretty robust growth, not to mention housing, right? So the two are sort of intrinsically linked together, uh, housing and and mattresses and furniture. I imagine with COVID, you know, some businesses have really struggled, but other ones have done well, especially in the home services. Yeah, it was, it was a little scary. Yeah, it was a little scary in the beginning when nobody knew kind of what was going on. Um, And the first couple of months were tenuous and we sailed through that and realized that we had a lot of things going for us. A, you know, the thing that makes furlough kind of interesting is we build our own products and we sell those products. So we literally say we, we build them in the back and we sell them in the front, uh, which means those products are built locally, which there was a a lot of uh, demand for local businesses, I think, as people realized, um, they could, they needed support, right? That, that some of these local businesses needed support. Uh, and the other thing is their service locally, uh, which people go, wait, you service a mattress? And I'm like, yeah, we, we actually do. That and was I, news to me. Yeah. When you yeah. Told me two yeah weeks back, so, but when you explained it, I'm like, oh shoot, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So when, when you build the product, you know, they have the ability to manipulate the product, right? So we can open it up and we can change comfort layers and uh, we do it all the time. Um, it's, it's part of the service that we offer. And that, that's kind of what you and I were talking about is I think Verlo is at sort of this intersection of service and a product, right? So uh, we kind of combine those two together. And then, of course, you collapse the profit pools of a manufacturer and a retailer, and it's a, it's a good business. And I mean, in terms of if you could break down the numbers, like is a good a good amount of the revenue the after sales servicing, or is that more? No, just like a no, actually, that's that's more of a complement business. Um, the the majority of the revenue is coming through the mattress sale itself, um, and just like anybody, we have. Uh, a bunch of different prices to fit all sorts of budgets and, and needs. Um, where I think Verlo really wins is what we call the master bedroom category. So when you're ready for that first quote unquote real bed, or you're ready to replace that bed, um, it's, it's a lot more complicated, right? Cause it's, it's a lot of mattresses are partner driven decisions. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, there's two people sharing a a surface and just like you and I were talking your definition of soft and my definition of soft could be very different vastly different and because comfort is so subjective it becomes difficult to manage and we like to say hey if if two people are sharing a, a bed together somebody's compromising chances are you're both compromising in definitely. some form or I mean, fashion. My wife and I yeah. are definitely compromising. She grew up yeah. in Europe and as you might know, Dirk there, it's really a little more hard, firm, firm yeah, mattresses. a little more firm. Right. And I never thought I had a, I had a soft pre- preference, but it was yeah. kind of polar opposites. So, right. Exactly. So, you know, I think that's uh, part of it is, you know, we have the ability to even make a mattress, two different comforts right? Left and right side, if, if you can visualize that. So, and you have some um, competitors that do that, but I think they're in like the 5,000 plus range. Yeah. Yeah. It's, around um, the soft, it, you have a yeah, remote control and <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there's air, right? So there's yeah. air beds and, and I think that's probably the, the most available mass market solution for adjusting different comforts, but you know, air is, is very polarizing. You, you have people that love it 
and you have people that don't love it. And it's, um, it's hard to find that in between. So um, there's a, it's a, it's a small part of the industry, a big part of the industry. I mean, select comfort is a, is a very large retailer. Um, but their really only corner is air. That, okay. That's, that's what, what they what's do. What's the Verlo product? So the Verlo product is primarily springs, uh, with foam, right? Nice. So it's a more traditional construction. Uh, we do have some all foam beds as well. But uh, the bread and butter is really uh, a coil spring with foam layers on top. Um, and that's predominantly what America buys. It's, that's what U.S. consumes. Um, and it's, uh, I, I guess, the, really the, the big buzzword now is, is sort of not now. It's been around for a while is, is hybrid. You're going to hear people say, oh, I have a hybrid mattress. And <laughs> re really all that is is just a basically a coil spring unit with some of the more what we'll call modern foams eg memory foam gel foam those types of things put on top but i just like to say it's the evolution of of coil construction i mean the the fundamental principles of of a coil bed really haven't changed some of the technology has changed but the basic principles of of how it's put together are pretty much the same and have been for for many years and in terms of like the industry players, I know from my own experience, we bought a, a that master mattress, very master pretty big purchase for us yeah. and mm -hmm. went to a couple stores. One was like a big box. Well, one was a major retailer, 300 plus locations. Sure. Another one, independent owner operated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very different feel. We went with the owner operated one as he yep. made us feel very welcome. It gave yeah even a little discount or sure. a pillow sure. and the, just the buying experience was a lot different. So mm -hmm. that's my limited experience with the, the mattress market, at least in the last uh, few years, but yeah. I'd be curious to hear from you, like how is Verlo position and who, what's like kind of the market uh, for the mattress space? Well, you know, again, our, our formula is a little different in, in that uh, we have, um, in, in all of our locations, there is a, a factory involved <clears throat> that the factory is locally owned. It's locally operated. Um, it's again, the product is made in that town. That's um, great. And because of that, our team uh, inherently has a lot of information about everything from how the bed is constructed and how that bed's going to feel to you right? Um, they've gotten pretty good at dialing in what we'll call a comfort. Um, but at the same time, they really can geek out about foam density, tensile strength and springs, um, different types of spring units, uh, the benefits, the drawbacks, et cetera, of, of all of the above. And you probably feel the passion. From and the, and it, it, it from the sort of becomes, you, you really do become this expert, right? Yeah. Because you, you're so in tune with how the mattress is constructed and what makes it that mattress, right? What, what makes it that bet? Um, and uh, it's, it's really interesting when you get together with our owners, because these guys are really passionate about foam densities and tensile strength of spring and different types of spring units that we might use and what we would call good spec versus bad spec. And uh, well, they're so know, like craftsmen where 200 is, years yeah. back, yeah. there were a lot of craftsmen, but now right. there's not so many that you're buying, you're producing the good that you're then selling. Right. And because we make every bed to order, right. We, we don't have a, a, a warehouse full of uh, finished product. Yeah. It's just, it's just not how we do it. So again, every bed that you come in, I mean, we have, we have back rooms full of raw materials to, to put beds together. But at the end of the day, we build it for the customer. So, so you don't have to have that crazy clearance where it's the 2020 yeah. model that you're selling and making no money on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's um you know, we, we, and we do actually transition models. I mean, we, uh, technology keeps evolving and, and there's new and exciting products out there. Um, that's been a little dampened down because of the pandemic, but we see that opening back up in 2022 where, uh, we're going to see trade shows again, and we're going to see different types of technology. And even though 
things have been somewhat quiet uh, over the past couple of years for innovations, um, I have a feeling that it doesn't mean people haven't been working on it. So we're going to probably see some pretty interesting things to consider uh, in 2022 and beyond. So, um, and again, the different types of foams, even if we think about in the last 20 years, memory foam has become a, a sort of mainstay, right? And tempur made that really big that they sort of made it their hook um, for their construction. Um, gel foam became really, you know, sleeping hot and temperature regulation yeah. became a big, big thing. And, and it is admittedly uh, an issue for people. You know, some people sleep very warm in their beds. Definitely. Some people uh, sleep very cold. It goes so, into sleep hygiene and unless like yeah. you've invested like 50 hours plus of your time, you're not going to pick up on that. So yeah, yeah. To the extent that, you know, from someone from the Verlo mattress enterprise, whether from the president or all the way down to the bottom, you can just like share those two cents. It's a big impact. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, there's a lot of things you can do as you, as you pointed out about sleep hygiene um, to get yourself in a, in a place that you can go to sleep. Right. Uh, and, and you and I kind of went down that rabbit hole when we were at the yeah. conference. I mean, there's, there's a lot of really interesting tactics that you can do physically, uh, not only for yourself, but your environment, um, you know, blue light, we talked about blue light a little bit. So there's all sorts of, uh, tactics that you can implement to help you put yourself in a position to, to get a better sleep. And, you know, it's funny cause we talk about all these tactics and that, well, is your bed comfortable? You know, that that's one of those that you should probably thought real at least consider, like, hey, you know, I could for whatever reason, I just can't get comfortable on this. That bed. is kind of the base. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is where you are sitting or lying yeah. in this. And as you say, I mean, I hope we'd all get eight hours, but the reality is most of us don't. Yeah. Mo most of us don't get eight hours overnight. So um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to it. And that sort of formula for better sleep is part of that three-legged stool for better, better health. Right. So we talk about, yeah. And people don't diet. talk about, you know, food too, just like you have to yeah. have, um, I guess the phrase another way, like fasting is healthy for you from time to time. Yeah. Like I fast. Yeah. I know you, you but mentioned that I, who's, I, who's making money, you know, selling fasting courses mm -hmm. or yeah, there's not a, there's not an incentive for someone to really push that, but yeah, from the well, extent I, Verlo is selling a mattress and there's, and then you can share a lot of free information right. to help that person along. Right. Yeah. Again, that, that comes in that expertise, right. Yeah. When, when you, when you're working with somebody who really knows their stuff, um, it goes a long way. Because I mean, that advice alone, like could be worth the price of the mattress. If, if it could like, be right. Yeah. Yeah. Getting and that exact comfort level. So then going from sleeping six and a half hours to seven and a half. Right. Yeah. And, and sort of all these things sort of combine to overall delivering a, a better experience and having technically a better result. Right. So you want to, you want to sell a product that solves a problem. Right. And sleep is a problem for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And, you know, your sleep surface is, is part of that, uh, but by no means is the end of it, right? There, there's other things that come into play. You know, for example, you might have sleep apnea. Um, that, that's serious. Uh, that's something that needs medical treatment and probably um, could result in something like a CPAP machine or, or something hmm. on, along those lines. So, I mean, there's some things that definitely contribute to poor sleep, but, you know, generally speaking for, for a lot of people being comfortable in bed, right. Being able to find a, a good sort of comfortable position is important. That's kind of where you start. Yes. Right. And then there's other things that we can sort of factor in. And then you in. can worry about not mouth breathing and all that. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you're comfortable. Yeah. You're, you're kind of extreme in that, in that <laughs> realm. I think you've, uh, you've kind of taken it to another level, which good for you. <laughs> Because it tells me how much you value sleep. Definitely. Right. I mean, if you're willing to go to, you know, uh, what did you say? You tape your mouth shut sometimes. I did. Yeah. For yeah. a while I was taping so you my could mouth train, shut. You could train I was in a yoga to, class and I realized, yeah, yeah my, I have a, a deviated septum and I looked yeah. into it. You don't yeah. really have to get surgery most of the time. So 
Right. Taped it shut so, for like 30 days. And sure yeah. enough, then both nostrils opened up and I'm yeah. not waking up as much. And right. So, I mean, so you kind of good it, in the morning, <laughs> took it to that extreme to sort of figure out a solution to that. Yeah. And, uh, but that's, um, like I said, it's a rabbit hole that you can go down just like anything else, <laughs> uh, in, in life. And, um, you know, as I say, we, we sell the surface that you sleep on and that's a, that's a great place to start. Uh, when do you have any about... competitors that kind of have, that can bring that same passion, um, that I, I think you can only come as being like the artists and craftsmen where you yeah. or your peer is actually making the product. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, there, there are definitely some, what we'll call mom and pop sure. mattress uh, shops out there that, that they're also making their own product. Um, there's definitely fewer of them than there used to be. Uh, I think that, you know, you go back 20, 30 years and that was a lot more common, um, well, I imagine it's a little more complex, no? Yeah, it's, it, it is. And, you know, supply chain is uh, a big name of the game. Obviously, franchising supply chain is, is a critical factor yeah. uh, for building your system. Um, but, you know, uh, it's, it's not a, I mean, I'll just be candid. It's not a sexy category. Yeah, you know, ma fine. Mattresses. It's, uh, <laughs> we, we kind of equate it to sort of like hot water heaters, right? you'd rather buy something else, but you know, you have to buy this now. Right. Yes. And it's really interesting because I think, you know, if you sit, I'm actually sitting in the back of one of our showrooms, our, our home office is actually located in the back of one of our flagship stores. So I literally, my windows, my office windows overlook our showroom every single day. So when I'm sitting here typing on the computer, I literally can just look to my right, like I'm doing now and I can watch customer interaction. Do you uh, see a lot of smiles? So, you know what I, so I'll, I'll tell you sort of like the average sort of <laughs> feedback that happens. Yeah. People come in and they're a little hesitant because buying a mattress is an awkward experience. <laughs> it, it is. I mean, yeah. And you, usually you come, with your spouse, like, yeah, you're, you're, you're with your partner, on. right. You're trying to figure this out. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of laying on stuff and you're like, how does this replicate eight, eight hours of sleep times, however many years or whatever. And, you know, in, in, in the course of an hour, let's say, if you yeah. give us that much time, um, you're trying to figure out this decision for the next eight to 10 years of your life. And it could be thousands of dollars, right? And it could be thousands of dollars. And so typically, you know, we, we have a sales process and, yeah. and just like everybody uh, does, and we walk them through the different options, obviously finding out key questions about their comfort, Yes. you know, with demonstration. And the first thing is everybody, again, I'm using the law of averages here. So not everybody, but a lot of people come in and they say, I want a firm bed. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's, it. Yeah. <laughs> so we walk them over to one of the firmest beds we have. <laughs> and I, if I had to guess, I'd say 80% of those people are like, well, not that firm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you don't really, again, what is your definition of firm? Exactly. Right? Very subjective. It's very, very subjective. So there's no that, like basis. It's not yeah, like number so, zero right, to 10. There's right. Exactly. So <laughs> we try to sort of get them dialed in to comfort. And then eventually, you know, we'll, we'll come up with a couple of solutions and um, then we kind of get them into, you know, this versus this, right. We try to get them down to two beds that we think really could fit the need uh, for what they're describing. And then ultimately they pick. So what we get typically is after the fact, right? So they might call us or they might leave a review uh, yeah. on Google or, or whatnot. And what I hear a lot is I wish we'd have done this a long time ago. Wow. Okay. And this just points out to the fact that mattresses are very postponable, hmm. right? It's an easy thing to say, no, nah, I'm not going to buy that today. Especially if you're not moving houses. I, I feel like yeah, that would be an impetus, but if you've been in the yeah. same house for a while. Yeah. Like furniture matches a very postponable feature or a yeah. purchase rather. Cause you say, Hey, I don't need a new sofa today. I don't need a new mattress today. I'd like one, uh, you know, are there some and, ways that Verlo kind of can push that forward? No. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it, 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 that's maybe the frustrating part is I, I wish I could sort of bottle that 
positive energy that happens when people are happy with the decision they made, not only from a, I bought the right product, yeah, but I also really like, this is kind of a life changing and I'm not to be trying to be overly dramatic, but this is sort of a life changing thing. Like I, yeah. I was very it's uncomfortable. Probably, I mean, people don't want to hear about it as much. I mean, I'm very yeah. interested in it, but it's kind of like your friend yeah. talking about a CrossFit workout. It's like, yeah. all right, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, as I was sitting watching Netflix last night, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dirk. So tell me more about the, the post sale experience, what, what the customer feedback is. Yeah. It's really interesting. I I think what we hear a lot is I, I, again, I I should have done this a long time ago. Right. And again, this gets into the postponability of, of buying a mattress because although you want to replace it, you don't need to replace it. And sort of that want and need start getting upside down a little vitamin versus painkiller. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's interesting because when you hear that, it, it makes us happy because A, we, we got them the right product, but they finally made the decision to make their life a little bit better. Yeah. Because again, we go back to whether you want to be preached to or don't want to be preached to, whether you, I, I think we all know in the back of our minds that sleep is important. Oh yeah. And probably is one of those things just like, you know, we cheat on our diets or we cheat on working out. Yeah. We cheat our sleep too right? We, it, we're human beings and this is just part of the condition. It's just how we live. And, and you don't know how much you need it until you don't have it. Like exactly. Have exact, month, exactly. Uh, right. Daughter. And it's just yeah. like, Oh yeah. You're in a, a zo- you're in a zombie nights. stage. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is painful. Like literally your eyes hurt right yeah. in the morning. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, another sleepless night. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. And, and that's sort of, if you could bottle that, and as I say, uh, you know, sort of sprinkle it around in the showrooms. And when you get that first person that comes in for the first time and they realize at the end, like, I'm going to be very happy I made this decision, you know, uh, you would make your, uh, your experience much easier, right. Yes. For everybody. Um, and, and again, we, we spend a lot of our time just trying to focus and get them in the right products. Uh, but generally speaking, people are so happy they did it, you know, and in sort of a weird way, you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to help that person, uh, and, and sort of make their lives just a little bit better, uh, because they're getting a better night's sleep. And again, we go back to that's part of that three-legged stool uh, of better health. And exactly, you know, when, when you wake up after a great night's sleep, you're, you're feeling pretty good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ready to conquer the world. Yeah. You're ready. You're ready. Like it, it does what it's supposed to do. And that is recharge the batteries and get yourself back to, okay, I'm ready to face today. So. And for someone that might be interested in opening and entering in this industry, like what's like the general investment range, how long, how much are we talking about to, to open up a Verlo mattress? Yeah. Range? So, uh, generally speaking, um, we start with uh, a factory, right? Cause again, as we talked about, you need to uh, be able to build that locally, right? You'd be able to, to have that uh, ability. Um, and when I say factory, I should be really careful because I think people sort of envision these ginormous- Hundred square foot. Yeah, yeah. ginormous uh, <laughs> uh, uh, facilities. And these are, these are just literally with a showroom attached, you're talking eight to 10,000 square feet. Okay. Right? So you yeah. have a factory in the back and you have the showroom in the front. Um, and right now, you know, looking at 2022, uh, the buy-in is going to be anywhere from, you know, let's call it 250 to 450, depending okay. on, That's reasonable. you know, r- real estate. There's a lot of variables. Yeah. I imagine um, some people lease and then a few people might even buy. Right. Some people space. might buy. Um, I think again, and this is a very much, a, you can sort of build into it and grow business because then once you get a factory, then you can open a satellite. So let's okay. just say um, you're in a, in a metropolitan area, you might have your factory. And, and we like to say sort of on the verge of that sort of commercial slash flex industrial. Yeah. Right? I mean, it our is, office is on Lincoln Road in Miami Beach, and you're not yeah. going to be opening up a 8,000 square foot 
facility for less exactly. than like 50 K right. a month. Exactly. So you want to, you know, be smart with your overhead. And, but yeah, and maybe in Doral it'd be yeah. 4K, but then 5K, to, I don't know. To, to open a, a 1500 square foot showroom in a more desirable, you know, retail corridor okay. mode, um, that becomes very possible. So oh, yeah. um, there's a lot of interesting and creative ways to help manage the cost. And, you know, it's, um, it's a good business and it's definitely something that you can operate with as little as, as four people. Um, and people always ask me about that. And it's like, well, if, if you're an owner operator, um, you're probably going to be working the sort of, again, build them in the back, sell them in the front. Yes. You might have a couple of production people, right. Who also can double as delivery drivers, uh, a couple of days a week, they're building a couple of days a week, they're delivering, um, you might be out selling, you might be lending a hand in production and you'll probably not want to work seven days a week. I mean, yeah. So, you have uh, so someone you're going to need in. someone to come in and, and cover the showroom for those days that, that you might want to have off. And it's a pretty low labor model. We, we have some of our owners currently doing this and, um, it, uh, it can work really well. Um, and there's so, nothing like when the owner is selling. And I think until yeah, you hit well, for most businesses, I mean, until you hit a million dollars plus in sales a year, yeah, the owner has such an impact and can just yeah. close at a higher rate, can upsell yeah, like absolutely. no one else. I mean, when when you as a consumer walk into the store and we like to, you know, as I say to our franchisees, you are the brand. Yeah. I mean, the the owner is the you can brand. feel the energy. They, yeah. It's they, the owner they, or family member of the they, owner. They live it every day. They they deal with the sort of the highs and the lows yes. of, of running a business, yeah. and um, it is their problem, and they're the ones that respond to it. And um, and I, and I'm very thankful for our owners. We just have a really great group of hardworking. They're they all step in when they have to, you know, and it, because it's their problem, and and they own it. And and, and I are like, the franchisees staying in the system for a while? Yeah, we have um, we have a lot of what people in their third, third agreement with us. So, oh, wow. So you know, now we're, it's we're going into 20 plus years. Yeah. 30 years. Right. Cause yeah. our agreements are 10 years. So, you know, when you're like talking about third renewals. Um, yeah. I mean, that's and, incredible. Cause like the average yeah. franchisee doesn't even last until that first renewal. Yeah. So I we, believe around year six or seven. That yeah. And that's, out, I say, so. I, I, I love our owners and, and they're, you know, uh, they keep certainly keep us accountable as franchisors as, as, as they should. Yeah. Um, and, um, we definitely have, a, a, I think our relationship's strong. Um, and, um, I, I learned from them, right. Because w when you're in the business for 30 years, that's, that's more than my 20 some years or whatever. Yeah. It's like, how many customers um, have they spoken to? How many oh, mattresses yeah. have they made? Thousands and thousands and thousands. And the advice, the, the, um, the smarts, the, you know, just how, how to solve problems, like the solutions. Um, it, it's just great. And, and they're very forthcoming and they're, they're very eager to share. And, um, and that's, that's just a great thing. So, you know, I, I thank them every day because we wouldn't be Verlon. That's what I say. They are the brand. They really exactly. are. They, they live it. Um, and, and they are the ones that treat our customers every day. And to your point of, when somebody walks in the showroom and they see the owner and it might be the guy that's on the television ad, right? Cause a lot of our owners are in their own ads oh, and cool. as, as I think they should be. Yeah. Um, and they go, Oh yeah, you're, you're really that person. You're, <laughs> here you are. you you really are actually in the showroom. And, um, there's a lot of power in that as you, as you've identified, you know, when you're dealing with the owner, that's where the buck stops. Exactly. And there's a lot of things um, that I think put a customer at ease about this very awkward environment, right? Definitely. So, I've got you yeah. covered. I've been doing yeah, this for 30 I can take years. Care of you. <laughs> and I think that's another sort of testament to us is we have a lot of customers that come back, right? I bought my last bed from you. And again, understand the recency in, in mattresses is like eight to 10 years. This isn't a department store or a grocery store where your frequency is, you know, you're looking multiple times either in a month, like a grocery store or a department store multiple times in a year. 
we're like once in a decade that we might see a customer, the same customer come back. And that's a long time. The horizon is very, very long on this. But it's, I think it's a great testament when you have people come back to us and you have this sort of generational ownership, then their kids come and then their kids come wow. and the grandkids come. And so are there opportunities say. like when you're doing the after sale servicing to kind of upsell a new mattress, like after it's sure. been like, yeah, we years? actually, we, that happens sort of naturally yeah. is we have some of our customers come in and a frequent, a transaction is, uh, my mattress is still pretty good, but I want a new one. And they'll either service the old bed they have and put it in the guest room and get rid of that dumpy guest room mattress. <laughs> and then they'll get a, a, a decent new mattress uh, for themselves, right? And so you sort of have, um, that. that's a pretty common uh, transaction for us. Like, hey, I'm gonna move my bed to the yeah. guest room could you service it and just kind of freshen it up a little bit? Then I'm going to get a new one for our room. And as I like to say, you know, as much as I'm sure we would all like to admit, we don't change over the years. You know, I certainly feel like I haven't gotten any older. Um, my body, <laughs> my body will tell you otherwise. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of uh, one of those things, right? As, as we get older and, and physical needs change, and maybe we wrenched ourselves, you know, doing something really incredible like yard work or, <laughs> you know, some people just step out of bed and hurt themselves for whatever reason. Step um, out of bed. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's sort of, again, all of a sudden your needs change, right? As you change, your needs change. And so what was comfortable to you is, is a little tougher now. And I always say, you know, when you're 20 something, you could probably sleep on the floor and be okay. Yeah. I, I did that a few times. For yeah, sure. sure. Right. And as you get older, the floor looks a little oh, less no attractive, right like no way I'm not doing that. So, so that's kind of how I feel about camping. I, you know, there's a point when I used to love to camp and that's like, well, well bed, yeah, I mean, you're, you're much I... more attuned also to your sleep than the average. American. Yeah. We, yeah, that's one like... thing. Uh, that's one of the, I guess, upside downsides of yeah. working for mattress manufacturers you really get spoiled. And oh, yeah. even when we were at the hotel, I'm like, Hmm, this mattress sucks. So, <laughs> so it's a little firm for me, but you know, it, it's, uh, it's hard cause you get spoiled by really great beds. So. And then, I mean, during COVID have there been shifts in kind of consumer consumer needs and kind of how you guys sell to consumers? Yeah, Does that change I, at all? Um, well, I think the biggest thing that happened during COVID is, is you had this sort of captive audience right? Because um, just like all retail, we're in a share a wallet game, right? And what are you spending your money on your, your sort of discretionary income on? And when people stop traveling, yeah, and they stop going Eating out to out. eat, right, going out to eat, um, they're sort of captive, like, well, I guess we'll spend some money on the house. And that's where we sort of fall into that category. And I think you and I talked at the conference, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, these guys did really well uh, during the pandemic. But yeah. try to get like its service. Like I'm trying to get a yeah. storm door. I, I can't get the product well, for 60 so days the, the, or the installation yeah, is like there, 90 days out. There's so. uh, some supply chain issues, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying we didn't have them too. Um, but because all of our components that are put into the beds are domestically sourced. Oh, great. I never had to worry about the impact of the ports, as an example. Um, we don't import bets. You okay, know? yeah, they're, exactly. they're, they're Again, they're made locally. They're made in your town. So the ability for us to sort of maneuver that supply chain headache, uh, which still persists, by the way, it's, it's, um, it's still out there, um, was a lot better. We had a lot more flexibility versus sitting and waiting for a container to come in from Asia. Yeah. Um, and I imagine and, some consumers too, you know, might really want to know what's in that mattress. And yeah, if I, I, some... I, I, I think there is some of that. Um, I think that made local sort of became a rally cry during, or at least buy local became a rally cry uh, during the pandemic as we saw some of our businesses suffer right? Yeah. Um, because their traffic literally just 
got cut off. You know, it was like somebody turning off a valve. And I think that we were part of that. But I think the bigger piece is we had a lot of people who were realizing we're going to spend a lot more time at home. And now's the time to dress the place up a little bit. And that includes getting a new bed. Um, and I always kind of joke that depending on how many people you had in your house, all of a sudden you're sharing the same space, right? So your kids might be going to virtual school, your spouse or partner might be working at home too. You know, these are where things like bandwidth become issues, right? Like yeah. how much ban bandwidth do I have in the house? Um, <laughs> I certainly noticed it uh, in my house when I had two kids at the virtual school and a, oh, I can imagine. And, a, and, a, and my spouse was also like working at home and yeah, it just became like crazy. Um, and ultimately I ended up going into our bedroom and turning it into my office because I was, I had nowhere else to go. Like <laughs> all the other areas were spoken for. And, and so I have a, a, a an adjustable bed, um, and so I kind of put it up in the recline position nice. and put the laptop on my, on my lap. And that was my office for, for many days. And I'm sure there are other people like me who, whose beds maybe weren't as nice. I'm yeah. like, God, this, this really stinks. Like, this, <laughs> I, I mean, if I'm going to be working here too, I, I really want this to be a better place. So um, and there's nothing like when you switch a mattress, noticing like the before and after. I mean, it's yeah, just like, yeah, whether it's, it's waking up less or. Yeah, your your body takes a little while to adjust to a new surface. But once it does, it's um, it can be very, very beneficial. Oh, yeah. Like you, you can really notice the difference. Yeah. And then, Dirk, just kind of con concluding the conversation today, yeah. are there. At Vetted Viz, we're all about data and, and benchmarking metrics. Are, is there any data or KPIs that you and or your your franchisees are tracking daily, if not weekly? Well, sure. I, you know, we we tend to look at uh, our results in the showroom, right? So that the kinds of KPIs that we track are, again, our traffic rate. Uh, yes. We we have a traffic camera system that's cool. actually uh, pretty sophisticated. Um, as well as our close rate, right? So, so yeah, traffic, you have the, the people coming in and then you can see the conversion. Yep. So we look at close our conversion rate. Yeah. And then of course your average ticket, right? So on average, how much are we selling to, to each guest? Um, I, I will say, and I, I think this is true for most uh, people in our category, our close rates have increased substantially. Hmm. Um, and I think part of it is, you know, people are, they do a lot of research online or, or, or whatever, and they come in and, and they're pretty decisive on, on what they want to do. Yes. Um, they're probably a little more determined to actually walk out with a product. Um, so maybe there's a little less looking around than there used to be. Some of that might be internet related. Um, some of it could be just, I just don't want to spend a lot of time on this as we get more time starved right? Yeah. As a, as a culture. Um, so, there's a lot more options. Yeah. And I, I, so I think it's interesting. I, you know, we, we do look at that. We have definitely seen an increase in our close rate as well as our average ticket. So, so people are buying more. So you, um, is there a way you can, with the traffic count, you can track how long people stay in the store? Um, actually we can look at that. We don't actively measure yeah. it because, uh, everybody's sales approach is a little different sure. and, and there's some salespeople that take a little longer than others. Um, and you know, we're not a high traffic environment. So, uh, like a grocery store where you have, you know, <laughs> literally hundred people Hundreds in the thousands. store at the same, at the same time, you know, we might have on a weekend, you know, four or six customers and usually they're groups like yeah. uh, couples. So we might have three groups, four groups um, in the store at the same time. That would be pretty hopping. Like we'd, we'd be pretty busy if we had that yeah. kind of traffic. And so, you know, it's all a, a function of how much our products cost. And, you know, as I say, it's, it's like a thousand dollar sandwich, right? So you, you can sort of do the math and figure out how many you need to get to the numbers that you want. Cool. Well, Dirk, this has been great conversation. I've learned a lot. 
Um, I hope those that are that joined have as well. Any kind of last uh, last thoughts that you might have that you'd like to to share with those listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube? Yeah, well, you know, I would say that um, you know, Verlo, it's it's a it's a great company. As I said, we've been around since '58. We've been franchising since the late '80s. Um, so we're a company that is, um, I think we're kind of coming back out of our shell here a little bit. We, um, definitely have taken care of some things. I think our culture is, is very strong. Uh, and likewise, I think our business proposition and sort of the results that we've had over the last year speak for themselves. Um, so, you know, I definitely invite you to, uh, to give us a ring if you have more questions, right. And uh, we're always here to to have conversations and start the dialogue. And, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that I think we get a lot is, well, mattresses. I mean, there's just so many mattresses and you and I kind of were kidding around about Casper and how fast they burn through their IPO money. They Um, they had a, they still have a showroom down the street from my office. I mean, that's great for you. And now I'm thinking about mattresses again. Well, right. So that, that, that's part of it. Right. And, um, (laughs) you know, as, as I say, we're not Casper because we make money. Like, I mean, that, that, that's kind of our, that's kind of our marketing industry. It's good. It's good. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great business to be in and, uh, definitely we're the only, uh, mattress, make it your own franchise out there. We're it. Um, and I was, I was joking with a broker at the conference and I said, I can probably name 10 sub sandwich, just sub sandwich concepts, you know, not even yeah, getting where's hamburgers. Your competitive moat? Yeah. Right. Hamburgers, chicken. Like I, Gosh, there's tons of different franchise restaurant. I'm a concepts. big fan of businesses that that are more complex, or yeah, that people yeah. aren't passionate about, right. like a fitness studio. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or well, a fitness, there's tons, tons of fitness concepts, right? So, but there's only one mattress franchise, and and we're it. And well, it um, sounds like you're well poised for growth, and you'll it, you'll be uh, back to where you were at Cole with the the crazy uh, I, growth. I, no, that 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 would those would be salad days. I mean, my goodness. Um, but you know what? Uh, we're we're going to grow intelligently, and yeah, and like smart, said, we, sustainable we've got, growth. <laughs> we've we've got some really good people on team, and um, I'm just very happy with our direction. So it's it's been a great ride. Derek, well, thanks so much for joining. In the show notes, I'll leave a link to, to the Verla mattress site, okay. as well as a profile on Vetted Biz. Um, and just wanted to thank you again for, for joining. Hey, appreciate it anytime. And uh, we can uh, hopefully talk again soon.